So the judge in the Derek Chauvin case ruled that the trial will not be continued and opening statements are scheduled to begin on March 29th. Let's preview one issue that is sure to take center stage during the Chauvin trial, the trial for the homicide of George Floyd. And that issue is the looming battle of the expert witnesses. What does that portend for justice? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So we now know that the Derek Chauvin trial will proceed to opening statements on March 29th because the judge definitively denied the defense request for a continuance of the trial. I want to preview briefly one of the issues that is sure to take center stage, and it's what we call the battle of the experts, the battle of the expert witnesses. It's not that unusual in homicide cases for the prosecution to call expert witnesses in one discipline or another, and the defense to call a, an expert witness with different opinions, with different conclusions. That's what we call the battle of the expert witnesses. In this case, the cause and manner of death is going to be hotly contested because we know what we saw on that eight minute and 46 second horrific video where those police officers virtually end the life of George Floyd and it's caught on camera. But the question becomes, what is the technical cause and manner of death for George Floyd? And does Derek Chauvin bear criminal responsibility for that death? So there are five medical examiners, five forensic pathologists. Those are the kind of doctors that perform autopsies and issue cause and manner of death rulings for decedents. There are five doctors that the prosecution may call as witnesses at trial. They are three from Hennepin County, Dr. Andrew Baker, who performed the autopsy, Dr. Lindsay Thomas, and Dr. James Fink. There's a fourth forensic pathologist that the prosecution has given notice of, indicating they might call her as a witness, Dr. Joy Carter, and a fifth, Dr. Paul Yorabe. Um, in response, it looks like the defense is relying primarily on one forensic pathologist, one medical examiner, whose name is Dr. David Fowler, and I'll talk more about Dr. Fowler in a moment. But we know what we saw in that videotape. We heard George Floyd saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and calling out for his mother. And then we got the medical examiner's report from the Hennepin County forensic pathologist. And essentially, he said that the cause of death was cardiopulmonary arrest while the police officers were subduing him with restraint and neck compressions. And here is the autopsy report here, issued by the Hennepin County Medical Examiner. So cardiopulmonary arrest is essentially a, a loss of adequate heart function and respiration that leads to death. And of course, this particular loss of uh, heart function and respiration was while he was being subdued, he was being restrained, there was pressure being applied to his torso and his neck, neck compressions by the knee of Derek Chauvin. So the question becomes, what does that mean in the context of the three criminal charges, two different degrees of murder and one degree of manslaughter. And I'm going to talk more about that in future videos. But right now, here's what I want to focus on. The upcoming battle of the experts. Because Dr. David Fowler, the defense forensic pathologist, is somebody that I know well. Why do I know him? Well, in my career as a federal homicide prosecutor in Washington, D.C., a number of times I hired Dr. David Fowler. He was the chief medical examiner for the state of Maryland. Um, he actually um, 
became a medical examiner. He grew up in South Africa and he is a very accomplished forensic pathologist. And I can tell you, because I've put him on the stand at trial, he is also a very strong testifying witness. So he will be a formidable expert. I'm going to talk more about what his opinions and conclusions may be about George Floyd's death and how they will compare with the opinions and conclusions of the prosecution's forensic pathologists. I'm going to talk about all of that in future videos. Right now, I just want to tee up the issue for the battle of the experts. And I want to talk about one thing that you may see the defense do at trial that is actually counterintuitive. Because that video, that nearly nine minute video, horrified uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the nation, and the world based on what we saw. You may actually see Derek Chauvin's defense team. I don't want to say embrace that video, but they may actually end up playing that video themselves for the jury over and over and over again while they have their expert forensic pathologist talk about what he's seeing on that tape and the medical manifestations of what we're seeing on that tape and how all of that relates to the cause of death. The manner of death is a homicide. No two ways about it. I think every forensic pathologist in the nation would agree this was a homicide. Why? Because homicide is defined as death at the hands of another and hands and a knee were on George Floyd when he died. So this was a homicide, death at the hands of another, but homicide, that word, doesn't automatically mean it's criminal. A homicide could be a killing in self-defense, right? That would be a lawful exercise of, of the killing of another human being. So homicide is an important term, it is a manner of death ruling, but it's the cause of death that is going to, I believe, inspire a real expert of the, a battle of the expert witnesses here, and it's something to watch. I'm gonna be watching it every day, and I'm going to be trying to give real-time comment, commentary on what I'm seeing, particularly given what I learned as a homicide prosecutor for decades sponsoring so many forensic pathologists, their testimony at trial. But right now, I just want to flag for you the fact that you may see the defense actually embrace and play for the jury over and over and over again that videotape and ask their expert witness, Dr. David Fowler, what he's seeing and what the consequences were to George Floyd based on the autopsy that was performed uh, on him, what the consequences were of what we were seeing on that tape. And here's what I want to leave you with, because there's a lot more to talk about with respect to the autopsy results and what they tell us, what they support, what they refute. No matter what the battle of the experts discloses to the jury, I believe based on everything I've seen, I haven't seen all the evidence, but what I have seen, I believe that even with as good a forensic pathologist as David Fowler is, and as adept a trial witness as David Fowler is, because he was my witness, I put him on the stand, I hired him as my outside expert when I needed um, someone with his background, his training, his experience, I don't think any of it will succeed in winning an outright acquittal for Derek Chauvin. And in future videos, I'm gonna drill down on the forensic uh, pathological findings, the autopsy report results, the battle of the expert witnesses, and why, at the end of the day, Derek Chauvin should be held criminally responsible for the homicide, for the unlawful killing of George Floyd. But there's a lot more to come on that front, folks. So please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And we'll, we will all be watching um, and 
hoping for and expecting justice for what happened to George Floyd, justice for George Floyd's family, justice for the Minneapolis community, the state of Minnesota, and indeed our nation. I look forward to talking with you all tomorrow, folks.